risen. Amen. That's why we are here today. Yes. He is risen. Oh. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank God he's alive. I could say anything would have been in vain. Yes. If not for his resurrection. So we bless God. Hallelujah. Amen. The theme of the conference has been um, Jesus Christ, the glorious King. Hallelujah. Amen. And we've been talking about his resurrection, his death, his burial, and all that. But today, we know he's alive, isn't he? Yes. Yes. I just want to quickly share about um, this topic that has been, you know, that has been in my heart. Say, so let the King of Glory come in. You know, we've been reading from Psalm 24, from verses 7 to 9. You know, Pastor read it, I think, um, two days ago. Psalm 24, from verses 7 to 9. So I, I titled this, Let the King of Glory Come In. Yes. Let the King of Glory Come In. Psalm 24, from verses 7 to 9. He said, open up patient gates, open up patient doors, and let the King of Glory enter. Who is the King of Glory? The Lord, strong and mighty. The Lord, invisible in battle. Open up ancient gates, open up ancient doors, and let the King of Glory enter. So who is this King of Glory? When, when, when you read this, we, you know, most of us, we think it's just about giving your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. But I think it's more than that. By the grace of God, I think most of us are born again Christians here. What? After you give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, what then? Why are you opening up? What? Where is he coming into? He's already in your life. So, open up to what? So that's what I want to discuss with us this morning. How do we open up to him? When you say open up to him, oh, okay, you're a Christian, good for you. I'm a Christian, good for me. But most of us, there's still some, some areas of our life that we keep from him, isn't it? Oh, God. Oh, you can have my service. Oh, yeah, I'm a choir. I'm an usher. That's, that's good. But my finances, no. No, no, no. You can't touch my money. But that's not what, you know, you're supposed to do as a Christian. You are supposed to allow him. Thank you. Thank you, so you are supposed to allow him, you know, to come into every area of your life. Your body, your heart. You know, you're good at the dark side. We are, well, if you say you don't have a dark side, you are deceiving yourself. You all have dark side. But it's, it's not to judge you, you know, let him into the good part as well as the dark side so that he can shine light on the dark side. That's why you have to open everything unto him. Open up your body unto him. 1 Corinthians 6 from verses 9 to 20. 1 Corinthians 6 from verses 9 to 20. You know, I don't like it, Jamie. My husband is the king of the person. Is a um, you know is a Bible scholar, <laughs> so I'm going to read this from the Amplified version. I love the Amplified version of this particular verse. First Corinthians six from verses nine to twenty said, "Do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, who is within you, whom you have received as a gift? That's the Holy Spirit. Thank God we talked about the Holy Spirit this morning. It's a gift from God." And that you are not your own property. So you can say, oh yeah, I own my body. No, your body hits the laws. And that's why you have to give him everything. You know? You were bought with a price. He died on the cross, isn't it? For you and I. And you were actually purchased with the precious blood of Jesus. And made his own. Made you his own. So you are his. If you're a child of God, if you're a born-again child of God, you are God's. You cannot dictate what you do to your body. Your body is the Lord's. So, because it, it, you, know, you were bought, you were pushed by the precious blood of the Lord Jesus. He said, then, 
honor and glorify God with your body. With your body. Honor and glorify God with your body. I love that song that says, Lord, I give you my heart. I give you my soul. Hallelujah. I give for you the Lord every step that I take. Just um, your service, good your service, everything, open up everything unto him. Hallelujah. And I said, You give him your heart. That is very, very important. If you are, you are here this morning and you are going to give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, today is the day. You have to. We are celebrating his resurrection. That is what our Christianity is all about, isn't it? Yeah. Whoa. No one has died and come back to life. He is the only. That is why Christianity is different from every other religion. Let them compare it to, let them say it's the same. It's not the same. Yeah. Because Jesus Christ is the only one that died and resurrected. Hallelujah. And he's sitting yeah. at the right, right hand side of the Father, making intercession for you and I. That's why Christianity is different. So don't let them deceive or confuse you. That um, all religions are the same. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. so, so you give him your body. You need to open up your heart. You know, you can, you know, it was said, I think someone said that, that the door of your heart can only be open from inside, not from outside. That means you are the only one that can actually open it. If you're not opening it, there, God will not force you to, you know, will not force himself on you. You have to. Open the door of your heart. You have to do it from inside. You know how you just open your door, you know, to someone to visit from, from from inside your house, you know, for the person to come in. That's just the way it is. So you need to open your heart unto him. Hallelujah. And then he will receive you. He will not cast you away. <laughs> that, that is the thing with our Father. Hallelujah. Amen. I read this quickly. I read um, Galatians 5 from verses. 19 to 21 from the CEB version, Common English Bible version. So when, 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 when you open up your heart to him, he will shine lights on all those things that are hidden there. Not to judge you, not to condemn you, but to make you really his own. So these are the things that you know might be in our lives that the Lord wants to shine light on Galatians 5 from verses 19 to 21. Say the actions that are produced by selfish motives are obvious. Oh, well, since they include sexual immorality, moral corruption, doing whatever feels good, you won't know that is, that is bad, isn't it? Just like, well, well, I feel it's good, but it's wrong. Say, doing whatever feels good, idolatry, drug use, you won't even know that drug use is in the Bible. And casting spells, hate, fighting, obsession, unnecessary obsession about stuff, about things. You know, you are obsessed with that particular, I don't know, brand or particular person. Obsession, unnecessary obsession. Losing your temper. <laughs> Competitive opposition, conflict, selfishness, group rivalry, jealousy, drunkenness. Parting and all other things like that. I warn you, as I've already warned you before, that those are these things, those um, who do these things 
won't inherit the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Amen. So you have to get rid of all those filthy hearts. You have to actually get rid of all those filthy hearts so that the king of glory will come into your heart. We shine light on those things. I'm not saying all these things are not there to condemn you, like I said. They're there to actually let you know that the king of glory that has resurrected is there to shine light on all those things. Hallelujah. And one other thing that I want to quickly talk about is <laughs> if you want the king of glory to come into your life, you have to get rid of unforgiveness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Unforgiveness. You know, I wasn't gonna I wasn't gonna talk about this. This this wasn't one of the points that I was gonna talk about today. But the Holy Spirit kept putting it in my heart. Unforgiveness. Because he said to me that he wants to deliver some people of unforgiveness and bitterness this morning. You need to let go. <laughs> you need to let go. <laughs> I know there are at least two people here this morning that are, you know, that that are have all, all that have that unforgiving heart, that are, you know, that have bitterness in their heart. You were wronged, right? It's true that you were wronged, but Jesus Christ, what did you, I, I can start quoting the, the, the loads and loads of verses in the Bible that talked about forgiveness. Jesus Christ, even when he was on the cross, what did they say? Hallelujah. Thank, thank God we are, we are Bible scholars here, Bible students. And what, what did he tell his disciples when he said, oh, um, Father, um, Jesus, how many times do we forgive our, our whatever, anyone that wronged us? What did he say? So do you want to start counting? 70 times 7. 70 times 7 is what? So you want to be counting? Oh, Sister Bonita, you offended me. One, I write it down. Until it's 490 times. Is that what Jesus Christ is saying? So what is he saying? He's saying, for just let go. Just forgive. Basically, forgive. Because it's for your own good, to be honest. <laughs> if you don't forgive, you are destroying your own soul. Hallelujah. I, I, you know, just two, two points about unforgiveness here. He said, the negative effect of unforgiveness. Unforgiveness creates an emotional storm of distress in which you know, in which you're feeling like stressed up, you're, you're feeling depressed, you're feeling insecure. For what? For what you can just say, I forgive you. Now you now bring the problem upon yourself. You are stressed out. You are anxious because someone did something wrong and you cannot just let go. I beg. Just let go. Forgive. You know, for your own good, just forgive. It also creates a hiding heart. You feel so hungry all the time. You are resentful. You be bitter, and you will hate that person. Hallelujah! I'm talking from experience. I'm going to give you an example soon. Oh well, a personal experience. Ephesians 4 from verses 31 to 32. I'm reading from the Amplified Version as well. It said, "Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor, that is perpetual animosity." <laughs> Animosity means hatred, yeah? yeah? Resentment, strife, fault finding. You just see that sister, you say, I don't even like her. Always finding fault. And slander be put away from you, along with every kind of malice, all spitefulness, verbal abuse, malevolence. What is malevolence? Malice. You know, to be, to be just nasty, just nasty unnecessarily. You just keeping malice unnecessarily. I will say let go for your own sake. So that you won't you won't be depressed. So that you won't be unnecessarily bitter. So that you won't you won't have resentment in your heart for your own good. And verse 32 say, be kind and helpful to one another. Tender hearted, compassionate, understanding, forgiving what? One another. Readily and freely. As in, don't think about it. Just forgive. Oh, you, just forgive. Oh, what did, what did the person do? Just forgive. It says, readily and freely. As in, okay, yeah, I know you forgive me. Yeah, uh, you, you offended me. Yeah, but I've forgiven you. Just as God in Christ 
also forgave you. Well, if you, if you decide not to forgive, that means you did not believe in the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. That means you did not believe that he actually died for the forgiveness of our, our own sin. Yeah. That means you didn't believe in that. Hallelujah. Amen. For you have to forgive. For your own good, you have to forgive. The King of Glory cannot come into your heart if you are full of unforgiveness. Hallelujah. Amen. I will close with this. <laughs> I have a, a personal experience. There was this person that was close to the family. And we were so good to this person. Over the years, we, we made loads and loads of sacrifice for this person. Everybody from my husband to your small Gabriel, we were sacrificing, we were making loads and loads of sacrifice for this lady. All of a sudden, she decided that, um, well, we did something, we didn't even know what we did. She, 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 the person couldn't even tell people exactly what we did. And it started said, spreading malicious rumors about us. I was really, really hurt because we tried for this person. I was, I didn't know what to do. I woke up in the middle of the night and be crying. My husband was just like, you know what? Now you tell me what is wrong with you. Just, just don't think about it. But I was always thinking about it because it really hurt me. It hurt me deeply. Then the Lord said to me one, you know, I was praying, God, avenge me. Avenge me, please. Avenge me, avenge me. Let everybody, let this girl just confess. Let her say the truth. What will it take you not to just, you know, for, for this girl to just tell people that, you know, correct that impression. God, that was my prayer. Then one day, I was so upset. And I said, God, why now? You are not answering my prayer. You, I said, avenge me. You are not avenging me now. Just do something. God said, you are. I said, I'm praying now that you are avenging me. So you are not praying the right prayer. I said, we, how do I pray then? Why do I pray? I said, I said one, you have to forgive. I said, ah, ah, that one, I forgive you now. And I said, no, you've not forgiven now. I said, I have. But you are still hurt and everything time you think about it, you, you hurt. I said, yeah, it's normal. Mm -mm. The Lord said, no. He said, when you know that you're forgiving her, it's when you think about it that you're not hurting. And you just say, bless you. Ah. I said, that would be difficult. Too. <laughs> that would be really, really difficult. And he said, you can do it. You know, I'm there for you. You are strong enough to do it. Then I cried and cried and cried on and I said, okay. I, I stopped praying the prayer of God and me. I started praying for her. In the spirit, thank God. We, you know, we talk about praying in the spirit. Because I didn't know what to pray. To be honest with you, I was like, should I be praying that God bless you for after doing all these things? I didn't know what to pray. I'm honest with you. I started praying in the spirit. Then gradually, God told me how to actually pray for her. I said, I should start blessing her. Ha! Blessing her. Then I started doing that. The Lord helped me to start to do that. Then the pain, every time, gradually, every time I think about her and what she's done, I wouldn't feel hot anymore. I'm like, oh, that's good. That's done, you know. I, I, and the Lord delivered me from that, from that stress, from that unnecessary anxiety. And you know what the Lord said after that? I said, yeah, that's good. I said, now you can avenge me. <laughs> I'm forgiving and now you can still avenge me. He said, no, it doesn't work that way. I said, okay, what now, Lord? He said, oh, you have to start swinging to our life. I said, okay. <laughs> ah, no, that's, that will not be possible. You know how you say, the Lord will tell you something, and you say, get the behind me. <laughs> I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That is definitely from the, from the devil. From the pit of hell. It's not possible. I refused until the Lord. <laughs> I didn't have rest until I started obeying that. And I started, every month, or not just once, I started swimming into this person's life. Every month. And I'm still doing it. And she has still not forgiven me. <laughs> and she, God, God has still not avenged me the way I think He will avenge me. But it's open doors of opportunities. It's open door. I can't even start telling you how many doors of opportunities is open just because I obeyed what He said. Ha, doors, beautiful doors of, of opportunities for us, 
for the children every year. Because I did what? I just stayed. I forgave. I did an interview that I didn't even know. That they just went there. I just went there. Oh, yeah. Don't worry. The guy was like, yeah. It's okay. Oh, we're supposed to be three here. Yeah? Oh, but I'm the only person. But don't worry, I can do it. Um, okay. Um, this would be this is your job description. And um, yeah, this is this and what this and this and what you'll be doing. I was like, okay. Where's the interview? I've prepared for the interview. So, I've, pre I've done everything. I <laughs> do a lot of uh, and the guy was like, that's good. I said, do you have any question to ask me? The interview was supposed to last for 40 minutes. Not small job. He was like, do you have any question to ask me? I said, um, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, okay, um, um, if you, I can start, do you know how to use this application or this? And I said, no. Hey, yeah, you'll be, you know, you'll, be, you'll be using some of those, you know, when we, even, no, he didn't even say when we are uh, We'll be, you'll be using some of those softwares in your role. I said, okay. Yeah, uh, there, I knew that they were giving me that job. I didn't believe it. <laughs> and in the interview, you started showing me how to use the application. No. Wow. No. And at the end of the day, he said, yeah, that's interview. I said, okay. Then I called my husband. I said, I got that job. He said, how do you know? I said, the guy didn't ask me anything. The guy was just teaching me. <laughs> you know? That can only be God, isn't it? Yeah. So, and, and the Lord opened my eyes to see that it was because I have obeyed. Mm -hmm. I obeyed Him. Despite the, the heart, despite everything. And I think that, that is actually why God wants me to tell you this morning. That if you are harboring unforgiveness in your heart, it is time to let go. Hallelujah. Amen. Just let God deal with it. Tell God, help me. I cannot do this by my own. If I can't do it by my strength, you need to help me to forgive this person. And he will he help you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. I close with this. Proverbs 14 from, and verse 30. New NIV translation. A heart at peace gives life to the body. But envy rots the bone. Hallelujah. If your heart is at peace, you have life. But when you are not at peace, like how the state I was, you know, before I, God actually helped me to forgive, I was always like ah, stressed out and, you know, crying for nothing, you know. But if you are at peace with someone, if you, are, if you don't have, un, if you don't have uh, unforgiveness in your heart, he will help you and you will be at peace. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Let, let us pray, let us pray, let us pray. Father, we thank you. Father, we worship you. We give you all the glory. Thank you, Father, Lord God, for your word that has come forth this morning. It's all about you, Jesus. It's all about you. Our life is all about you. Everything that we have done, everything that we are doing, it's all about you. It's all about you. And I like that song. It's all about you. In my shed, the scaly goes in the scaly machine. It's all about you, Lord. <laughs> it's all about you. In my shed, the scaly goes in the scaly. It's all about you, Jesus. It's all about you, Lord Jesus. In my shed, the scaly goes in the scaly. It's all about you, Jesus. In my shed, the scaly goes in the scaly. It's all about you, Jesus. It's all about you, Lord. It's all about you. It's all about you. It's not about me. It's not all about anybody. It's all about you, Lord. Thank you for your for allowing yourself to to be crucified like a criminal for the forgiveness of my sin. How far I worship you. I give you all the glory. Give you all the adoration, Lord. Thank you, Father, Lord God, for the grace to forgive all those that have wronged us, Lord. 
You say the devil will not steal our joy Amen. because of unforgiveness in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. We are set free from bitterness, from Amen. unforgiveness in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. The resurrection power is setting us free this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Because we know you have done all things well. Thank you for setting us free from the captives of the everyone. We give you praise. We exalt your holy name. In Jesus' wonderful name we have prayed. Amen.